Welcome back. You're listening to Innovation in Government, sponsored by Kerasoft on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today is MK Palmore, the Director of the Office of the Chief Information Security Officer at Google Cloud. Now, MK, before break, we we're talking a little bit about the current state of the, the public cloud and, and the security innovations that are happening there. We talked about agencies and their kind of hybrid network that they're going to continue to, to kind of uh, have in the, in, the, in the near future. But generally speaking, agencies have been slow to adopt cloud, and maybe there's been some fear of it. Maybe there's been some uncertainty regarding the security and, and, and well, will it protect my data and how it will protect my data? But it seems like that viewpoint really has changed. Why has it changed? What's Is it just the pandemic or is there more? Um, so that great question. I, I think that there's a couple of factors that contribute to this. One, for anyone that served for any amount of uh, significant time in the public sector space, uh, we know that the vast majority of, of sort of the technical expertise and the um, uh, networking space has to do with folks who are skilled networking practitioners. And so these are folks that have been uh, historically for a better part of you know two decades doing network and infrastructure security, right? So to them, uh, they may just not have the enablement uh, in place that will allow them to level up their capabilities from a, hey, where do we stand from cloud adoption standpoint, which is why I'm sure there's an emphasis now in terms of hiring within the public sector to identify cloud solutions, architects, cloud uh, engineers that they can bring on board to the organization to better help this uplift and shift to cloud related resources. So some of that gap historically has just been sort of, you know, what we call that fear, uncertainty and doubt associated with not knowing, not knowing how to initiate the journey, not knowing what the journey is going to look like when you land in cloud. And I think that as cloud becomes more prevalent, certainly in the enterprise space, as there are more users, we know that uh, certainly over the past two and a half years uh, with regard to the pandemic, and I think you touched on this in, in the beginning notes of, uh, of this discussion, organizations are now identifying and moving to the cloud to a degree much faster than they have historically because cloud provides that uh, um, not only reliability, but resiliency, that ability to scale resources on demand. And it changes really uh, when you get down into the nuts and bolts, the security narrative of organizations. And again, makes a more compelling uh, opportunity for organizations to transform. If we adhere to the historical, let's just build it in a room where we can see it, put our hands around it. And when we know it's secure, if we stick to that paradigm, you can be assured that there will continuously be adversarial advantage and behaviors targeting public sector organizations, and they will not be adequately equipped uh, in order to combat uh, those adversarial TTPs. Given all we've seen over the last couple of years with the attacks, whether you, we, we can probably go back to the OPM hacking in 2015, when you know they stole credentials and got in and were able to network hop from a contractor system, all the way through the solar winds, whether and then some of the ransomware attacks we've seen recently, you'd think that those folks would, would kind of understand that putting your arms around it, watching the blinking lights is still not the best way. Is it just fear of change or is it just, I, I can't see what you're doing, MK, so I don't trust you either. Like, what do you, when, when, when you talk to those government clients, what are they saying to you? Well, it, it's sort of all of the above, uh, unfortunately. It's different components of, just simply not knowing what that movement and shift does, whether or not they're still going to be able to provide the kind of internal attestation that their data is protected, that they know where it is, they know who has access to it. All of these are things that, you know, for, from our perspective at Google Cloud, we have answers to these. And so if the customer is taking the time to engage in those conversations, we're certainly providing uh, those answers. And I think that the, the part of the challenge is historically organizations look at, okay, how do I do this massive shift but they're afraid that if they do a massive shift and then get there and realize they don't have the capabilities to maintain it, it creates a problem. And so what we oftentimes advocate, certainly for public sector organizations is, you know, put your foot in the water, do a limited scope uh, engagement in the cloud where you take some amount of business related workloads, resources and processes, and you put those in the cloud. And then, you know, if you look at it from a learning curve perspective, you do that a couple of times and you actually build that, capability and you build the, you know, the natural confidence that comes from operating uh, in a new environment, once you've built the muscle on that, then you're much more in a better position, I think, to prioritize, okay, we can take larger amounts of the organization. We can even make a determination 
of cloud first in terms of moving forward in the future. In other words, from this point on, everything we do is going to be built with cloud in mind. But you, you, you have to spend some time learning. Uh, and certainly that level of comfort, again, comes from identifying a workforce that's capable of enabling and getting you there. Uh, and then, you know, identifying partners in that journey that can really roll up their sleeves and help you understand what it is that you're doing. Because at the end of the day, we're confident they're going to be happy with the landing, but we, we all have to sort of help uh, public sector entities march along this journey because, quite frankly, it's, it's just not one that they're used to. Sometimes the landing is the easiest part. It's the takeoff, right? It's that first moment when the plane tilts you back and you're going, what did I get myself into? That no, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, what a, you mentioned the workforce side of it. You talked about solutions architects. You mentioned solutions engineers for cloud engineers. That Those are, are hard jobs to fill. I'm sure even Google Cloud has trouble filling those jobs. So what can agencies do around uh, reskilling, upskilling? How can they kind of identify the skills they need to really start to get those folks who are okay with both the landing and the takeoff? Yeah, well, the first thing they can do is make an affirmative decision to uh, continue to support the leveling up and upskilling of their workforce, right? When someone raises their hand, who's been a, you know, a network engineer for their entire career, if someone raises their hand and say, hey, I really understand this part of the business, but I'd like to learn cloud, you know, continue to support that. And I, I will be, you know, the first person to say that, you know, public sector uh, support of upscaling is something I certainly I've benefited from in my career in public service. You know, the, the, the ability of an organization to say, we support your desire to learn financially and otherwise, and we'll give you the time and resources you need to go out and make, uh, make that uplift of your skill set. That always comes back in dividends to the enterprise. And so the first thing I would say, just commit to the opportunity, let your employees level up their capabilities. They will reward you by bringing these additional capabilities back into the enterprise. Uh, and that's one way of certainly doing it. The second way is, uh, you know, making that investment externally as an organization and supporting efforts by, uh, you know, combined public and private sector entities to level up overall the IT and security workforce. You know, the challenge for certainly those of us in cybersecurity is that we, we all know the figures. We, we go almost every year with over a million positions globally not filled in organizations that are related to cybersecurity. And that's everything from entry level to mid-level positions. And part of the challenge certainly is organizations who hire. Uh, we have to look differently at what it means to hire a new employee and how much investment we're all willing to make in terms of getting that employee to where we need. And we also have to open the optic. Like we have to be thinking about how do we get other people to the table to this exercise, you know, from a uh, diversity, equity and inclusion standpoint who may not be your typical cybersecurity or cloud, you know, solutions architect starting points or have the background that you normally want to look to. I'm a big fan of, uh, of STEM. Uh, you know, I went to a, a STEM school. Uh, I wasn't a STEM major, but I went to a school where things like engineering were emphasized and part of the natural culture of the organization. But guess what? There are political science majors out there, music majors, folks who have raised their hand and said, I am interested in this field. And the data shows us that if you provide folks with the necessary upskilling, they can enter successfully into the field of cybersecurity and can be up and operating and helping organizations. And so government, I think, or public sector has to look at it the same way, invest in the people, uh, ensure that they get the upskilling necessary. And again, it will continue to yield dividends to the organization. And in fact, you saw that from the Office of Management Budget and the Federal CIO Council, who did that upskilling, reskilling academy, specifically focused on cybersecurity. They did very something similar with data scientists. So they're trying to get that going. It's it's a it's a quality, quantity thing. Can you get enough people to fill those positions? Yeah. Which goes back to I think your original position that you can, as an agency, try to bring in new people, but you can only do it so fast and only, only upskill and reskill so fast. So you have to lean back on folks like Google, Google Cloud. Who have some of those skill sets already in place, plus the automation and and the other tools like AI and ML that can really help you deal with security. Talk a little bit about the balance that 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 achieves by bringing some of those automated technologies as well as the people side. So I, I do a lot of talks uh, in the industry around cybersecurity, and I believe that there are uh, three pillars that will be a component of any transformation effort, and they are cloud adoption, automation and zero trust. And so when you break those down, we spent nearly the entirety of this conversation talking about cloud adoption. I think that organizations need to look to adopt to the degree that they can 
uh, mature tools and services that provide some level of automa automation in their security environments. Great example of this is, you know, the use of SOAR playbooks in addition to uh, or as an adjunct to your security operations features. Uh, we have a, you know, tool from our product Simplify that allows organizations to actually build out playbooks that create automation in terms of how to address the thousands upon thousands of uh, alerts that most organizations see in the course of the day. And so if you can build out playbooks to then help segregate and address those alerts, especially the ones that you believe historically, uh, you've done the homework on, you know what they look like, you, you know what needs to happen, you're not quite sure you wanna get rid of them, you can catalog them, archive them, and not spend you know, that precious time putting eyes on it, and thereby leaving that you know, time that you need to get personnel to have eyes on the things that might have an impact from a security standpoint to the enterprise. That's a simple example of where automation can help. And so uh, there are lots of examples, certainly in onboarding into the cloud. You know, uh, configurations we know is a, con a continual problem in terms of addressing uh, how organizations onboard to the cloud. There should be automation involved in how an organization onboards so that controls and security features are enabled and present when an organization creates and starts up a workload so that they're starting from a best point of departure in terms of operating in the cloud. And then the last point around zero trust, uh, you know, I've had exposure to the security industry in a lot of different ways over the years. I know that we get um, turned off sometimes by uh, industry buzzwords or things that we feel are overused, but I absolutely feel like zero trust. This is the time that we need to be talking about this. The concepts of it are valid. It's a valid um, uh, uh, North Star to put in front of an organization in terms of developing a capability maturity model within the organization as it relates to their security architecture. And it's a viable thing, I think, that's going to get us to that next level of infrastructure and security needs. And that's something that's out on the horizon in a distance that we're not quite sure what that looks like, but I'm certain that Zero Trust will play a role in getting us there safely. MK, I know that a lot of uh, agencies are focused on zero trust and focus on automation. So there's a lot more we could talk about it. Unfortunately, we're out of time for today. Let me thank my guest. MK Palmore is the director in the office of the chief information security officer at Google Cloud. MK, thanks so much for taking the time. You bet, Jason. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. My pleasure. I'm Jason Miller, and you've been listening to Innovation in Government, sponsored by Kerasoft on Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search innovation.